welcome to Camo Monster. In the last case, we have discussed the general procedure of the design of a heat exchanger. But that the problem was there was no phase change. But if you come up with a problem in which there is, is a phase change involved, whether on the hot stream side or on the cold stream side, you have to add the latent heats or accommodate the shell side film coefficients or tube side film coefficients where the changes of phase has been taking place. So first of all, there is our case. We have a mass of hydrocarbons. These are the vapor, continuously in vapor phase. The phase change is actually taking place in the cooling water. Most of the time we have the cases in which the two zones are involved, heating phase change or phase change in superheating. Meaning that you have a saturated steam which is being heated and superheated most of the times or you have a cooling water which is which becomes saturated at some temperature but in this case uh, which is a special kind of transfer line exchanger you have water which entered at 25 degrees centigrade and uh, it produces a superheated steam at 20 bar and 175 degrees centigrade so first of all for the phase change you have to calculate the keeping all the things that was discussed and advised before same the changes will be discussed in this video when you have a phase change the first change will be in the shell side you have to use the uh, you have to calculate estimate or determine the properties of both phases liquid and water vapor so the density viscosity thermal conducting the properties all that are required and discussed before will be tabulated here like i have a water on the shell side in which the phase change is being take place the first the major step change was the energy balance calculations the heating zone the cp will be different and the delta t will be 25 to 100 the water is in liquid form and the cp is 4.1833 and the heating zone the q will be determined by mcp delta t and for the phase change the only the latent heat is involved and the temperature difference will be negligible so we have to multiply the mass flow rate by the latent heat of vaporization of water so this is the second zone of heat the third zone will be based on the superheating in which the water is in vapor form again the cp will be changed the cp of vapor is 2.146 however the liquid was 4.1833 the delta t will be different 175 okay it, it is here 150 degrees and so 150 minus 150 degrees centigrade so the delta t in this example i have calculated the delta t in three zones and my stream is my hot stream is entering at 700 degrees centigrade and it is leaving at 350 degrees centigrade so the overall temperature difference of 350 must be maintained on the hydrocarbon side but when we calculate it comes out to be 254 so the mass of water need to be higher so this 95.209 degrees centigrade of error is consolidated so a correction factor constraint will be developed using some kind of x factor in which the constant change will be uh, produced in all the delta t's because the mass is up there so in the in the change of mass will be accommodated by a factor of x which will be shown in the preceding step in the next step delta t calculation so here it comes out to be x it comes out to be problem when you do not know now the mass flow rate of water but you want to calculate using the delta t you need to obtain on the opposite side where phase change is not taking place remember if the phase change is takes takes place on the both sides it becomes really really complex problems and it is not the case like this is about the condenser or evaporator type it is shell and tube type uh, you can also obtain the different models of evaporator and condenser like of plate type fin type or uh, kettle type thermosiphon different type it is the shell and tube type in which phase change is taking place so we are discussing the difference here now the lmtd will be different the lmtd will be calculated for the three zones respectively individually for the first zone the delta t will be calculated using the temperature that was obtained for example in the heating zone the delta t was 
the hot stream is entering at 700 degrees centigrade and it will leave from the heating zone where the water will reach its saturation point at uh, 700 minus 29.74 like somehow 371 uh, degrees centigrade. So such as the differences in the other sides will be obtained and the water are pre-calculated before. After calculating the LMTDs for the three sides using the same procedure this, uh, described in the last video, we can calculate the weighted LMTD. Weighted LMTD is simply the average of all LMTDs. This is the total heat divided by MCP of the both zones. Remember, the phase change is not involved as the temperature difference is not present there, so the delta T will be zero. And at the phase change zone, so Q over MCP, we get delta T, weighted LMTD delta T. It is a procedure taken from the process heat transfer by DQ current, chapter number 12, condensation of single vapors, example number 12.3. Other things are same like calculation of heat transfer area of tubes and the uh, shell equivalent diameter. Uh, and, but the second difference is the main difference is the calculation of the film coefficients. The film coefficients are also divided into the three zones. Same procedures will be applied, the U, C, P over K, density, everything will be different for the liquid water. Also, in the superheating zone, the vapor density, viscosity, thermal conductivity will be used. Same procedure will be applied for the calculation of the heat transfer coefficient. And overall cooling coefficient will be calculated by fixing one tube side coefficient as the phase change is only taking place on the shell side. So there will be three heat transfer coefficients. For the evaporation zone, we have to assume a heat transfer coefficient because no delta T is being taking place. So from the literature, we know most often the HI will be equal to 1500 BTU per hour fit square degree F is the most common value used for the evaporation over condensation zone, same use. So UC can be calculated by the same formula and LMTD is it, here, in this example, LMTD is calculated using the same formula as we use like uh, for evaporation zone, delta T1, delta T2, okay, th there is problem. Both are present. If there is problem here, so we have to ignore the heat transfer coefficient of the evaporation zone. As it, its area is larger, so it must not be ignored. Now we have to check the verification how much evaporation length is. The total area of evaporation divided by total area of heat exchange. Superheating zone plus evaporation zone plus the heating zone. So the yeah, we have assumed before the vaporization takes place at 75% of length. It comes out to be correct. Absolute error is only 0.8%. The second change is weighted overall heat transfer coefficient. There will be the weighted heat transfer coefficient using the summations as defined in this case. Uh, summation UAC divided by summation AC, we will find UC. Other things are remain the same. And uh, also the press pressure drop calculations will be for the different zones like here, for the heating zone is separate and evaporation zone, it actually not phase change, does not accompany any considerable pressure drop. So there will be special two zones for liquid water, where liquid water density Reynolds number will be used, and one is for the vapor case. So here vapor density, specific gravity, uh, Reynolds number, everything will be used. For the tube side, it will remain same because there is no phase change will be taking place. So this is overall differences that should be consulted and should be understood while uh, designing a shell and tube heat exchanger with phase change taking place and I have uh, explained the cases in the both scenarios in which the heating is take place with saturation or saturation with superheating all cases are combined in the scenario and it will be easy to understand so stay tuned stay blessed and stay with us thank you